Hi everyone, it's Ragebit, and today we're playing Eco version 9.4, the game where you build a civilization, but every action you take impacts on the environment. In today's episode, we're going to discuss everything that you need to know to get started in Eco. I'm going to show you how to set up an awesome avatar and customize it your way. We're also going to talk about how to find that perfect spot on the map and how to build your first dream home, as well as a few other handy tips and tricks. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to see when you load into the game is an alligator, although normally it would be a create avatar screen, and this is where you can customize your avatar. So on this screen you can change your gender, you can change your skin color, you can also choose different hairstyles and the color that you want those to be. You can choose if you want facial hair, and you can even change your eye colour. The majority of this stuff is customisable later in the game, so don't stress too much about getting it perfect. We can also change the colour of our backpack. Don't forget if you're enjoying this video or you just want to help me out, press the red subscribe button below. It really can help YouTubers out, so please consider pressing that button, it costs you absolutely nothing. Uh, there's a few other things here that we can customise as well, such as our shirt, uh, or whether we want to wear a vest or not, and both of those colours. We can also change our belt and the colour that it is, and we can choose a few different styles of pants. So whether we want short pants, long pants, or real short pants, and we can choose the colours that we want for those. We can also adjust uh, what sort of boots we want to wear and those colours, and finally, we can decide if we want to wear a hat or not. Personally, I go with not. Alright, so here we are, day one in Eco. We've loaded in and we're ready to go. What you'll notice at the top is the tutorial. Brilliant for new players, but today we're just going to skip them and get right into it. The first thing that I like to do is choose a great spot on the map. You can open the mini map by pressing M. Or you can click on the map in the bottom right hand side of the screen. So what I'm looking for when I'm considering a new spot is I like to be close to different biomes. I know that a lot of the action will occur in the desert because many players will be mining ore. I like to be close to the rainforest because you can get pineapples and mushrooms along the, the rainforest floor. Um, I also like to be close to grasslands because these are great for growing crops. But it normally depends on what sort of playthrough I'm going to do. In this one I'm going to choose to be a gatherer and a farmer a bit later on, as well as maybe some advanced campfire cooking. I'm going to be looking for beets, as well as berries, because these are great in wild stews later on, which are really good for calorie intake, but we'll get more into that in later videos. Alright, so you can see I've opened up one of our world layers here. Um, I've opened up the plant group and population. In this spot you can click on any plant and it will tell you where you can find them. Today I'm just going to click on huckleberries just to get a good idea of where I can find some of those berries for those wild stews I was talking about. I'm also looking for some water because water is visually pleasing and if I choose I can put some fish traps down later on and I don't have to travel too far away from my house. I can also build water wheels later for power generation as well, uh, which often comes in handy. Alright, so I think I found the perfect spot. It's near water. There's a couple of different biomes there. As you can see, there's the desert. Uh, we've got the forest and there's a tiny little bit of grasslands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the overlays on the side uh, to drop a marker and then we're going to head for that location. So before we get going, I'm going to choose my first skill that I'm going to take for this game. Uh, you can do this by clicking on the star down in the bottom left hand corner and this will open the skill menu. As you can see, there's many specializations in Eco and this game requires you to work collaboratively with other players to do well. Today though, I'm going to start as a gatherer, and this will help later on when I choose farming or campfire cooking, because it should increase my gathering yield. Right, so as we head towards the marker, we're going to collect things along the way. Uh, you can move around the map by pressing WASD. You can also gather or interact with things by pressing E. One thing that I didn't learn until much later in the game is that you can hold shift to sprint and I wish I knew this a lot earlier because it should increase your productivity a lot. Right, so we're just moving around the map, we're just looking at all different things, picking up any crops along the way as we head towards our destination. 
If this is your first time playing Echo, you'll probably notice that the world is visually stunning and that there are many animals running around the map. All of the animal and plant data is trackable on your server's website. Uh, we'll discuss this in a later video. If you have any questions about this or anything else in the video, please use the comment box below and I'll attempt to answer them for you. Uh, because I'm playing on a public server, we might also see some other players today and some of their buildings that they have built. Like I said before, Eco is extremely collaborative and I think that there's many advantages to playing on a server such as trading and skill sharing, but we'll get more into that later too. Here it is, this is our destination for our new home. The first thing I'm going to do is look for a nice flat spot to place down my campsite. This will automatically claim an area of land for me and it has a tiny stockpile attached which I can use later to put extra resources in. The campsite can be found in your backpack which can be accessed by pressing B and it can be placed by right clicking the mouse. You can also rotate any items in Eco by pressing the Q button. Inside the campsite we'll find other things like tools and food that's going to be necessary to get started. But right now I'm going to take out the land claim stake and some land claim papers because we're going to claim a little bit more of our area. Eco claims work in a 5x5 block and you can claim as many as you like as long as you have the land claim papers and they're not claimed by somebody else. Don't worry though, you can unclaim anything that you claim at any stage and you'll get your claim paper refunded straight back to you. You can also get extra land claim papers by buying them or by learning new skills through skill scroll books. Alright, so I'm just going to grab all of my tools here and put them into my favourite hotkey positions. You can put any tool into any of those 10 slots down the bottom and they can be accessed by pressing 1 through to 0. So say you want your axe on number 1, you just press 1 and you'll have your axe and maybe your land claim stake on 0 and it will instantly open your land claim stake. So now we're going to move on to the crafting side of Eco and we're going to start by building a workbench and a campfire. In order to finish crafting our workbench and our campfire, we're going to need to collect some wood tags and some rock tags. But to do that, we'll need calories. We need to open up our storage menu and consume some food, which will give us calories. Then we're going to go and chop down some trees and probably mine some rock. All right, while we're chopping down this tree, I'll run you through why we need the crafting table and the workbench and a little bit about the house that we're going to be building today. We'll need the workbench to build a tool bench to repair our tools, also to build mortared stone for our home's floors, and hern logs for walls and roofs. You could just build a home completely out of stone or completely out of hern logs if you'd like, but today we're going to mix it up to show you a few different things. The campfire will allow us to cook lots of food to get calories, which we're going to need to perform actions such as chopping down trees or mining stone. We're also going to use some of those calories to craft anything from our crafting tables, such as the workbench or the repair station. All of those things require some kind of work. We're also going to need some of those calories to do the crafting, such as building mortared stone or hern logs in our workbench. So as you can see, calories and food intake is a really big deal in Eco and there are many online guides dedicated just to this. So we'll just bring these logs back to the tiny stockpile at our campsite and we'll open it up and you can see that the workbench no longer requires any wood but the campfire is missing 12 stone. So what we're doing now is we're just going to wait for our workbench to complete. You can see that it's slowly coming along. While we're waiting we'll get our hammer out which we'll use to move the workbench around and the machete to clear an area for our workbench. Here's our workbench ready to go. So we're going to place it down, we're going to rotate it with Q, but first we need to clear that area. So we get our machete and we can clear some of the bushes out of the way. And using our hammer tool, we can pick up the workbench again and place it back down. All right, so if we open up our workbench, uh, what you can see is that we've got a variety of different things. Um, I start here by looking at boards because I foolishly thought that you could build a house out of wooden boards. You can't. You can build a house out of lumber, which is what I thought the board boards were. So again, today we're building our house out of hern logs and mortared stone. 
few other things that I build when I first open my workbench is always a couple of storage chests to store my food in and a large stockpile to store all of my uh, wood and stone and things like that. So if you'd like to copy the exact home design that we're going to do today, it'll be a 6x6 six six house uh, with walls three high and a flat top roof, but it'd have mortared stone floors. Then I would queue up right now 36 mortared stone, 94 hern logs, and one hern log door. In newer versions of Eco, including this one, Hern logs can actually come in different varieties from softwood to hardwood to just a basic hern log and this is dependent on the type of tree that you cut down. If you'd like it all to look the same then try to chop down the same species of tree or experiment with different trees and see what type of hern logs you'd get. In this video we have a hardwood roof uh, and softwood walls. Alright, so a lot of what's left of this video now is me collecting resources, and it actually goes for quite some time. But with the power of editing, I can stop and take you through all of the key details and all of the information that you need to know, and we can get our house built in no time at all. So let's get straight into it. Here's some key details that you need to know. So like I said before, a lot of this video now is me collecting resources for the house, such as logs and stone. A few key things that I might mention is that mortar can be constructed in the campfire uh, using either fibre that you can get from plants in the scythe or by chopping down the trees and collecting the pulp. Either all of those will help you to make mortar, which you need to make mortared stone, which we needed to build the stone floors. It's also worth mentioning that you will need to build a tool bench, which can be crafted at the workbench. Uh, you'll need this to repair your tools, such as your axe and your pickaxe. If you have any questions about anything that's going on while we speed this up, or you'd like a few more extra details, then please just write a comment in the comment box below. Another great thing to consider is getting yourself a wooden cart. These things make transporting resources easier, and you don't have to run back and forwards to stockpiles all the time. I'd consider getting one of these as early as you can, whether you build it or whether you buy it is up to you. Alright, we've reached the part in the video where we're going to build our first home. We have all the resources we need and we're ready to go. The first thing that I like to do is clear an area using the machete and then dig out an area for the floor. In this case we're digging a 6x6 hole and on this server they have big shovel which allows me to carry more than one piece of dirt just by pressing E which definitely makes things a little bit easier. Some servers don't have big shovel or any mods at all so you'll just have to shovel each piece of dirt individually one, by one piece at a time. So when we build we need to be holding the material that we want to build with. We also need to have our hammer selected and then we need to press F. This will open up the build menu and there's many things to build here. So I'm just going to select the floor option here and then we're going to lay down our mortared stone floors. You can see how easy it is, you just place one block at a time. It's exactly the same process when we're building our hern walls, just make sure you have hern logs in your hand and your hammer ready to go. Press F, select wall and just place them where you would like. So building the walls can be a little bit tedious, if you make a mistake just hit it with your hammer and it'll go straight back into your hand. You don't need to build your walls free high like I did in this video, I just feel like it gives you a little bit of extra space when you're inside. But you can get away with only building them too high. Uh, don't forget to leave a space for the door. Windows are a little bit different though. They're built with the building tool. So you just knock out a space in the wall, press F, select window, and place them in. So the final part of building your house is obviously putting the roof on. Uh, it can be a little bit challenging if you built your walls free high to get up onto the roof. In this case we were lucky there was a pile of dirt beside it that we just climbed on top. But a little trick around that is if you press F you can actually select a ladder and you can build a ladder up the side of your house which you can take down later if you'd like. Building the roof is a very similar process to building our floors and walls. You just need to make sure you're carrying the item that you want to build with. You have your hammer equipped and that you press F and select roof. There are many options here to choose from, today we're going with a flat one. I particularly like to build with the flat one because then you can put a stockpile on top of your roof later and it makes those storage options easier and makes things look a little bit neater. 
So as you can see, we've almost finished the roof here. Don't forget if you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, or you'd just like to say hello or give me a thumbs up, I'd love to hear from you. All right, so some of the last things that I like to do is clear the area. So I'm going to use my machete to make it nice and neat out the front and chop down any trees that might be in the way. This is also a great time to remove your first campsite. You can do that by hitting it with the hammer. You just have to make sure that it's empty. Some people leave them on their sites as a little bit of a reminder. Personally, I don't think they look that nice and I'd rather use the space for something else. Obviously, we need to add a door as well. When I was building this house, the server logged me out and when I logged back in, it was night time. So you might notice a little bit of a difference there. Hand locked doors can be crafted at your workbench and they're just placed in by right clicking the mouse. So that's it today guys. This is our perfect house with mortared stone floors. It looks amazing. Thanks for watching this video. I've had a lot of fun making it and hopefully you've had a lot of fun watching it too. Don't forget if you enjoyed the video too, you can subscribe below or just give me a thumbs up. That would help out heaps. Otherwise, see you next time. I'm Ragebit and you just watched How to Get Started on Eco.